What's up guys, it's Track, and today we're going to be unboxing a full retail version of the Nerf Trilogy. I picked this one up at Wally World for 35 United States dollars. I'll throw a link in the description box below if you want to pick one up of your very own. I think it's on Amazon and Walmart.com right now, but uh, we did an early review of this one when it was available at Epic Nerf Battle, and it's a pretty cool blaster. Uh, it's a concept that we've wanted for a long time, but now that we can speak completely candidly about it, uh, I'm really upset it does not have some sort of tube magazine style. I think that the Liberator is much better in terms of like how a shotgun with an integrated tube magazine should perform. And then, of course, I think that the Spring Thunder is a strictly better uh, community-driven version of this. But uh, we've got a couple of options here. We've got a few things that I don't know if others have addressed that I would like to talk about. Overall, $35 gets you five proprietary shells. They are not the same as the ones that came with the Sledge Fire. The Sledge Fire being, I think, a more powerful version of this. Uh, and then we've got 15 darts, so exactly enough to load at once because Hasbro would never give you anything extra. That would be crazy. Uh, the good old days have come and gone, I'm afraid. So let's go ahead and pop this guy out of the package and we'll load it up vampire speed. Last and only thing I want to talk about on the packaging is we're still playing this game. Use only official nerf darts. Nice try Hasbro, but knockoffs not only perform better, but cost less money. So uh, definitely not doing that. For the purposes of this review and being fair, we will use the genuine darts that came with it. We will put those over the chronograph, but uh, bear in mind that there are far better ways to reload your blaster, especially in a world where you barely get enough darts to fill the entire blaster once. So uh, cool features about this thing are integrated storage in the back for five of these shells, which makes me wish that it came with six, but hey, what are you gonna do? You can load them both darts up and darts down. Unfortunately, darts down will fall out, so you're going to wanna load them darts up, which does make it easier to reload on the fly. Handle is very small. Look there, you can see uh, my hand barely fits, and when it does, it's not particularly comfortable. That said, this is a gimmicky blaster. It's designed for slightly younger, slightly smaller nerfers. And then when we prime this back, you can see our door opens up here, and it's an auto-articulating thing. So pretty much, well, I thought it was. Uh, the prototype was you throw it in, it should align itself. You throw it forward, it should be ready to go, and you get a blast of three Nerf shells. Now the coolest thing about a shotgun that uses shells, Busby proved this way back in like the late 2000s is shell ejecting action is cool. I'm looking forward to a 3D printed kind of attachment here that'll catch these shells so that you don't actually have to go chasing after them. But uh, overall, a very cool design, very neat, very novel. Now one thing that I want to point out that I think is pretty cool is if you take a shell and you load a single nerf dart into it, whereas on the sledge fire that would have been an issue. Here you guys can see this will fire just one, and I believe it's gonna fire that one a little bit harder. Hopefully it gets us up to elite ranges when we do that. Make sure you do a full prime. There is a kind of jam clearing button in here. Uh, the overall function of this blaster is really cool. You've got an articulating triple AR in here. The AR operates one at a time, which is how it can fire. Almost like a smart AR, uh, but totally different concept. Uh, one or two blasters at a time. Overall, like a pretty sweet gimmick blaster. If you have multiple ammo types and shotgun blasts count as three hits instead of one in your game type, like this is a viable option. However, uh, you're, you're gonna be chasing these shells all over the battlefield. Now, it's my understanding that you can purchase a reload pack of just the shells, which is really, really cool. I'm glad that they have that as an option. It's been an issue in the past with some blasters where you weren't able to get proprietary magazines <laughs> durian, um, and it made those blasters overall worse. So the fact that you can get extras without buying an entirely new unit is pretty cool. The overall ergonomics of it, again, not bad. This stock is very short, this handle is very small, but I suspect this was designed with smaller foam warriors in mind. Pump grip is good, it's a standard pump grip, it's got a good stroke on it forward and back, and the articulation of what is ultimately a very complicated mechanism is good. The fact that this door opens up top and loads like this 
is nice. Now you can load them in. I did this the first time. If you load them in like this and there's one up instead of one down uh, and it's supposed to kind of auto feed in there, uh, you have to help it along or it will get caught on that pop door up there. We've got one tactical rail up top, no in strike attachment, no stock attachment, which is making me really question these days, like what is the purpose? of the Elite line. If you're not taking advantage of your built-in in strike compatibility and you've changed the color scheme on everything, like what are we still doing calling blasters like this Elite? Is it just for the branding? I am not entirely sure. Overall, I like it. Let's put it over the chronograph and give you some final thoughts. All right guys, so it might not be the greatest trilogy of all time. That is of course reserved for uh, the Halo franchise. However, uh, it is a solid blaster and I, I dig the gimmicks. I've always digged the gimmicks. The Max Force line is one of my absolute favorites. I think that shotgun shell blasting is really, really cool. We've got a pine cone obsession going on in the background there. So I don't think that this is gonna read triple shots. So instead we're going to start with one of these singular shells here and see if we put that over the chronograph, what we get exactly. Uh, we've got this corner, so hopefully this will read. Ooh, interesting. No, no real reason for that, but uh, we, did not, we did not fire the way that we wanted to. So let's try it one more time. There we go, and 58, so maybe it's a fluke. Let's try another single here. See if we can't get that one to perform a little bit better. 65 is definitely closer to elite performance. The eject mechanism's a little funky. Uh, and then we'll, for good measure, we'll fire a triple burst over, but I don't think it'll pick it up. Oh, it did, 54. Maybe it thought they were all the same projectile. So uh, slightly better there off of the 56. Yep, so if you fire one at a time, you're gonna get slightly better performance than if you're firing single shots. Let's go ahead and uh, grab, whoop, grab a couple of these genuine elite darts. So it's time guys, it's time to see if we can do some sweet three gun tricks. We don't do, a lot of three gun tricks, so this is gonna be an embarrassing attempt, but whatever it is, succeed or fail, this is it. Let's see if we can't catch this shell. That was, that was poor. All right, uh, it can't, it can only auto eject if it's straight up, it would seem. So let's fire one down range, see what kind of ranges we get. Hey Jinx, let's put one down there, shoulder length, slight angle, and hit the fence, so that wasn't particularly good. Um, let's do a shotgun blast down range. And the spread is solid, but the, the ranges are just so lackluster compared to even modern nerf blasters, and especially what we're used to these days uh, from competitors and the aftermarket. But overall, I mean, it's sweet. These are, well, when it works, it's sweet. These are shells with no lip. They articulate based on joints inside them. So I think that they're a superior to the sledge fire version of shell. I wish you gotta really, really ratchet this back if you want it to auto eject. I would expect some funky hiccups on this guy. I don't think that it's like a perfect concept and I really, really wish that it costs even twice as much. For 60, 70 United States dollars, if this was a little bit longer and had an integrated tube magazine where you could actually cha-chunk, cha-chunk, and it would top the shells out. I mean, essentially what I want is an injection molded Spring Thunder. This has some of the best Spring Thunder features in that it'll fire single Sabos down range, but it just, uh, I don't know, something about the goofy gimmicky action of it mixed with the overall tactical styling and pitch of it is like very discordant to me. I think that uh, it could have been better or it could have been simpler. However, as it is at this price point, it's a solid pickup. I'm very curious what your thoughts on this blaster are. Let me know what you think in the comment section down below. Uh, overall, I think that it's fairly priced for what it is. I just think that it could have been overall better. Um, it's cool to have new shells out there. It's cool to have this for all of your shotgunning needs. It's definitely scaled and designed like a tactical shotgun. And I think that that fills a very interesting role, whereas 
the uh, the original sledge fire had an almost wild wild west sort of feel to it and I've got a whole conspiracy theory about wild west zombie shooters but uh, we'll get into that at another time maybe even on the vlog channel uh, I should be streaming tonight on Twitch come hang out with me twitch.tv backslash vampire drag you can critique my review of the trilogy I think this is one that's like a really easy pickup if it's on sale uh, but currently you have to be a massive shotgun aficionado for it to make sense. As always, much love, Nerf on Drag out.